So in this video, I'll be showing you how to work with procedural generation in multiplayer. Now in here, you'll see an example of where I've just made a basic resource spawner. And as you can see, this is completely single player, which is why it looks different on the one screen and different on the other. Nothing here is networked and the whole script is entirely single player. So let's go into the script and have a look at that. But just before I do that, it's important for me to also show you that all of the items are not network objects. So they're not spawned. They are just instantiated locally. And as you can see here, I have my game manager where I just have set up my settings. I've put in my resources and set up all the settings. I've made a similar resource manager in one of the earliest videos of mine. So if you want to know how I just done this, you can go have a look at that. Now, looking at the script, you'll see that the spawn resources functionality just runs in start. Now we want one basic thing here. What we basically want is if you're the server, well, you just want to spawn the resources. And if you are the client, you want to ask the server for a seed. So the way that seeding works is basically if you've played Minecraft, if you have a seed, you can put in a seed and someone else can put in the same seed and you'll get the same world even if it's not multiplayer. This is how seeding works. It basically influences the random functionalities, which is what procedural generation and random generation takes use of a lot. So in order to do this, we of course need to convert the script to a network behavior script. Now you'll notice that I am using fishnet.object and I'm using fishnet.connection. This will be needed. So let's first of all make this into a network behavior script. Now after that's done, we don't need the start command anymore because we'll be using the on start client because this way we can run the functionality as soon as the player is ready to actually receive the commands. So next thing that we'll need is we want to check if we are the server. So if base dot is server, we want to do one thing. And if we're not the server, we want to do something completely different. Now, as I mentioned, we want the server to be in control of this seed. So first things first, let's set up the integer, which is the seed. This can be any number pretty much as big as you'd like. So in our case, we're just going to set the seed as we are the server equals to random dot range somewhere between zero and 999, 999. Like so, and now the seed will just be completely random. You can basically also control, set the seed, allow the player to set the seed. All of this would work perfectly fine. They would just need to change the seed variable, but for simplicity's sake, we're just gonna randomize it every time. Now, from here, we just want to run the spawn resources functionality for ourselves. Now, because we also want to send this to other clients when they are ready to receive it, we'll be using the target RPC. If you're not familiar with this, this is a way to focus one network connection purely and just send the functionality only to them. So the first thing that you need in here is a network connection that we're just going to call con. Now, whatever connection that you write in here will be the one running the functionality because it's a target RPC. So no one else will run it, not even the one calling it. The server will be the one that has to call the target RPC and will also want to take in the seed. Now, in order to actually apply the seed, you need to go into the Unity's random functionality and say in its state. This is how you apply the seed. You just feed it the seed and there we go. As you can see here, it also states initializes a random number generator state with a seed. Seed is used to initialize the random number generator. So that's exactly how the functionality works and why we're using just this. So what we need now is we need to spawn resources in as we are the server. We just send it to ourselves, which is the local connection. That's how you always get your own connection in any behavior script, network behavior script, sorry. And we'll just have to send in the seed. And now this should just work for the server, but now to the clients. So the thing that the clients will do is they will call the server and say, hey, I'm ready to receive the spawn resources function. So we're going to make a server RPC, which means that we're running this to the server from the client. And we're going to they require ownership equals to false. And this is just going to be a method that just says layer ready, for example, can do whatever really. And we wanted to send the network connection as well. Now, this is not because this is a client RPC. This is because the server needs to know who to target with the RPC. So we're just going to call this target. And once the player sends this to the server, remember the server already at this point has the seed. So the server can actually just send the spawn resources functionality directly to the target sending in the seed as well. And now all the player has to do is say player ready with their local connection. And this should basically just work. Now, keep in mind, you could also be doing this with listeners uh, and events. I believe Fishnet has the right events for this. So if you want to use that instead, you can go look at the API, but that is a tad bit more advanced. So I wanted to keep it as simple for you to understand as possible. So just to go over this once again, if you don't want to look at timestamps and you can just skip this part, but the server basically launches the game first, sets a seed and spawns the resources for themselves. And every time that a client joins, they will tell the server that, hey, I'm ready. Here's my connection. Send me the information to spawn the resources. And then the server will send them just that. So let's go have a look at how this works.
So first of all, I'm going to start the server. As you can see, the server has now started and now try and take note to where you see the bushes, the trees, and I'm going to start up the client. Now you'll notice here when the client is joined and the trees and bushes are all in the same locations, even though we haven't been using the spawn command. And this is all because of seeding in Unity. So as you can see, the world's the same. We collide with the exact same things and each other and everything works just fine. Now keep in mind, this is not necessarily the correct setup if you want to interact with the scenery, but this is a really good way to randomly spawn scenery and hopefully a good way to get you started understanding how to work with seeding in unity using networking it's extremely useful for a lot of different things so hopefully this will get you started if you do like the video and this was helpful to you please do subscribe leave a like and comment down below if you have any other ideas for videos that i should make throw it in the comments below or join the discord server and i just hope that you have a wonderful day